listen, I'm an engineer. I don't give a shit how it looks. Mm. I want it to be environmentally friendly. Mm. I'm not in it for the money or mm. the branding or the how much more we can sell or whatever. But some of the things are difficult to quantify because what is most environmentally friendly? Simplifying mm. a production setup mm. by making fewer variants, uh, by making um, sort of better utilization of the instruments and stuff that you're using in your production? Or is it sort of just what comes out of the production? Mm. How, do you, how do you do that? Hello, Joachim from Green Innovation Group, back here again with another episode of the Sustainable Healthcare Podcast. And uh, for those of you who listened uh, last week, you'll know that uh, we still have uh, Thea Falkenberg from AMBU with us uh, in the studio uh, to talk even more about uh, sustainability in medical devices and development of medical devices and how to actually uh, get it out there. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was just a complete joy to, to talk uh, with Tia. So I really hope you enjoy the episode. And uh, if you're interested in hearing more from us or doing any consulting projects together, you can uh, learn more and reach out to us at greeninnovationgroup.com. Enjoy the episode. Plastic is such a good focus point for uh, because it's so visible and we feel like we have an intuitive understanding of it uh, and, and that it's bad and it's in there's also just a very big difference between how environmentally bad and how climate bad uh, uh, plastic, plastic is yeah. uh, and it's something everybody has an imp- opinion to and it's usually that oh cool. plastics uh, plastics are bad and and there's just uh, for most organizations, uh, when we are out advising clients and so on, it's not that it's insignificant, but it's not the best place to start. But it's the place that most people start. Yeah, it's know. also because it's so sort of the the pictures of plastic wastes fly, uh, floating around in the yeah. ocean, uh, going uh, mm. on holidays and mm. seeing beaches filled with plastic waste, etc. That's something that hits people very sort of yeah, uh, close to their heart. Yeah. And it's easy to relate to. Um, exactly. Yeah. But, uh, did you ever see the studies DTU made at, at one point, these studies on the use of plastic bags versus paper bags versus fabric? Uh, I think I recall it. Yeah, I, I can't recall the, the specifics of it. but. Uh, and but, it was yeah. a, it was a great study yeah. in the sense that first of all, a, you read it and you realized, yeah, this is this is not easy for a uh, for sort of non engineers to read. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you really sort of have to keep everything really straight by, to understand what they're trying engineers. to say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what they're trying to say, but that's also because the subject is so complex, yeah. right? Uh, And in the general public, there's an understanding that plastic bags are just bad. But you really have to reuse those fabric bags a lot of times before they're better than using plastic bags. And if you reuse plastic bags, then they're not bad. They're bad if you use them once and you throw them away. But how many does that today? Yeah, and especially in co- it's just a, a very big variable is the waste handling system, which is uh, in, at least in Northern Europe exactly. really quite good. And so uh, today you can say our focus maybe, you know, yeah, use as little, not just plastic, just use as little material as you, yeah. as you can. Um, that's that's always going to be a good way to be environmentally friendly. Um, but plastics. But the key is mostly to make sure that it doesn't end up in nature, Mm. that it ends up somewhere where it can be reused for something. Uh, And then as a society, everybody has to get better at reusing plastics. And medical devices are handicapped there because Mm. using recycled plastics is almost impossible for us due Mm. to the biosafety issues Mm. where we have to be able to guarantee the exact composition of the plastics that we're using. Mm. And and, and the, the, the technology today for recycling plastics is not there. Then a lot of people will have heard a lot of talk about chemical recycling. Uh, which is great, and we are hoping that chemical recycling will be ready soon. But today, it uses so and much in energy. In this context, the chemical recycling is 
Um, yeah, so chemical recycling is basically taking the, the plastics and then converting them back to its molecules and then yeah. making new pristine plastics from it. So, uh, so very crudely put, then today you make plastics by throwing uh, oil components into a very big furnace that then sort of splits the molecules out. Uh, and then you get different molecules and you build plastics from that. Uh, and so in, in chemical recycling, you would basically just want to throw your plastic back into the furnace, split it out into molecules yeah. and start over. But that process is so energy consuming mm. that it's not environmentally friendly, that it's actually sort of mm. depending on how you weigh different factors, but, but mm. it's worse for the environment overall to do that rather than to just uh, mm. dispose of the plastic in uh, sort of a normal non-recycled recycled way. But I'm also completely confident that there are so many people working on that agenda that mm. chemical recycling will be a viable mm. option in the future. Maybe not for all plastics, mm. um, but we'll see. Yeah. It's moved a lot in the Rough last five years. Rough guess at a timeline, 10, 20, 30 years, where are we? Uh... Um, I'd, say, mm, I'd say five. Wow. Yeah. Uh, would be my hope. Mm -hmm. But that's also because of the the attention that subject yeah, is yeah. given, right? So it's mm -hmm. a bit like electric cars and the batteries for electric cars. Yeah. There's so much focus on doing research on better and more environmentally friendly batteries that are not using rare earth metals, yeah. etc. Um, that I have no doubt that Mm. that will move very quickly. Mm. Uh, and I think it's the same with recycling technologies. But of course, as a producer, you also you you can't bet a lot of you, know, yeah, you can't yeah. bet your development on something that you're not in control of mm. and so from my point of view i want to make our devices recyclable because they should be recyclable and that mm. will be better in the long run but i also can't control that the mm. end users are going to recycle them no, no. but i can control how i produce them yeah. <laughs> i can control how we run our production what materials we choose to buy what what, um, where would you choose to buy them from? When we have a production plant in China, do we buy the material in Poland or do we buy it in China? Mm. Um, and where did it come from originally? Yeah, <laughs> because it if it came yeah. from Poland and the, co the, the company I bought it from just shipped it to China before they sold it to me, then, then, then that doesn't help either, uh, right? It's so ridiculous, the stories where with uh, the Norwegian caught salmon that is then uh, shipped to Asia to get caught up and then shipped back uh, again uh, to be sold in the European market. And exactly. I, I, know, I know transport is, is less than we of emissions that it's but it still just but doesn't it's still, make sense. It, it's just, it's not the from way From an efficiency would. point of view, exactly. it's, not very, it's not very good. And you can say we're also facing the same, uh, for those who might know Ambu's products very well, they will also realize that a lot of our products that come in different sizes have the same packaging. Mm. And then you think that's one of the places where we're looking at, okay, we should use less material, we should make the packaging smaller. Yeah. But the thing is, if we make the packaging smaller, then it may not fit into the same machines. We may, mm. may need more machines to do the same yeah, work yeah, yeah. then. We may need more energy. You may, may use mm. more resources in different ways to... So it's, it's, not a, it's not always so straightforward for us to do. And then as a medical device pr producer, we're also obligated to have a lot of information on the label. Mm. So there's also sort of a minimum <laughs> yeah. size. We can't yeah, fit otherwise. all of this in no, if no, we no. make the packaging very <laughs> then small. Then you need to, to provide uh, binoculars as well. for. Uh, and the hospitals are set up to sort of, they're used to these being all the same sizes so that they can put it in the same box and they just have the numbers on them or whatever. There's a lot of factors that goes into it. So it's, it's very rarely as simple as we'd like it, but it's all a question about sort of tackling that complexity and saying, great, then let's dive into it. And maybe we won't change it on every single product. We want to change it where it makes sense and where it will create the best environmental product uh, and best environmental impact that we think and the best, best workflow for our patients. Because in the end, if I have to prioritize between saving um, I'd say this could s the, doing this particular thing will change will save nurses twenty minutes a day mm. in their workflow, or, or I can do it in a different way that won't save them any time, but uh, it might be a little bit better for the environment. 
Ja, ja, I mean... Uh, How do I prioritize w- that? Warm and hands by who? and uh, clin- <laughs> clinical personnel always win that uh, one uh, for, today, now, for now, but it, definitely. it, it might change. Yeah. When, when, when you're developing a product like that and having these uh, dialogues and negotiations with uh, the factories that are going to produce it later on, uh, with the commercial departments of Ambu, which are going to, to sell it, uh, and how, how, do, how, does, how does that process and those uh, dialogues uh, work? Uh, and, uh, and, 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 and We're still how, how do they out. look at sustainability? <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. So you can say our commercial organization is very intent on anything that is uh, environmentally friendly because, of course, they're closer to the customers and there's no doubt that that's a, that's a thing. It's a marketing yeah, they can, parameter. They can feel that from the payers and the... Yeah, and the, uh, you can see it on sort of our, on our competitors' campaigns and how they market themselves, etc. It's always, you know, you want to be marketed as a green mm-hmm. company. Um, so they're they're always on it. Then mm. their enthusiasm yeah, usually yeah. falls off when we explain what the price is. <laughs> but <laughs> that's how it works. Uh, our production are actually a lot more welcoming to environmental concerns than I probably would have guessed before entering the the, the industry. Maybe maybe it's because they're medical device manufacturers and they're mm. also purpose driven. We, we own the factories, so they're part of Ambu. Um, but um, I think there's also, like, you shouldn't underestimate that most of the environmental concerns that you do, sort of reducing materials, simplifying um, uh, shipping structures and geographical mm. locations and stuff, that actually helps production and actually mm. makes it easier for them to handle, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah. But some of the things are difficult to quantify because what is most environmentally friendly? Simplifying mm-hmm. a production setup mm-hmm. by making fewer variants, uh, by making um, sort of better utilization of the instruments and stuff that you're using in your production, or is it sort of just what comes out of the production? Mm-hmm. How do you how do you do that? But Ambu's done a lot of things in making sure that we utilize old scrap material. Mm. That's a good cost decision, but it's also a very good environmental decision. Um, cost reduction is the main driver in sustainability efforts in medtech companies. So, uh, I mean, um, uh, installing uh, solar panels all over the mm. roofs of our factories. Yep. How does your the, when does your dialogue start with with, with the other departments when you're de- developing? Uh, a new product. How, how early on are you uh, having the dialogue with production and commercial? And, uh, as yeah. early as possible, yeah. but there is also sort of a s- sort of different parts of, a, of an organization have different timelines, right? Yeah. So it's difficult to start talking to production about things that are many years into the future. But if it's something where we need their input and their knowledge, then we yeah. will involve them regardless. Already before clinical trials? Or is yeah, 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 yeah. Way before clinical trials. Uh, clinical trials, um, well, it's a little bit different in medical devices yeah. compared to, to pharma companies uh, because the cr- clinical trial setup is, is different. So clinical trials for a medical device company comes quite late in the process because mm. we have to have a pretty much finished device. Mm before we can do clinical trials. So it's one of our very last steps, yeah, which is yeah. also complicating sort of development because, mm. well, what if you yeah. fail that part yeah. then? <laughs> then a lot just stake. before you <laughs> manage yeah. to launch the product. Yeah. Uh, but we have to do clinical trials on products that are production equivalent. So we have to have built the production before we can do clinical trials, yeah. which is a big risk. So we're always trying to sort of find ways of how can we yeah. do component testing. How do you mitigate testing, some of that risk then? That's very, very different from device to device. Yeah. Um, so you can say it's it's not it's a, it's a completely different challenge on our ECG electrodes, which are mm. sort of placed on the outside of your skin, mm. and and they're basically sort of from a consumer point of view, mm. a lot of people call them bandages. Yeah. Uh, they're a lot more complicated than that, but sort of from a yeah, yeah. from from the patient point mm. of view, they don't do anything different yeah. than a bandage does. 
uh, compared to something that we mm. sort of insert into people's bodies. Uh, that's that's very different. Testing a laryngeal mask in your throat is not it's not something you do for fun. No, <laughs> no, that's a, that would be a weird kink if uh, <laughs> it's probably out there. Uh, it's quite funny. Yeah. I mm. realized that over four years, some of my engineers have unfortunately had health problems and had to go to hospital. And most of them, true to their engineering nature, will ask to get the devices <laughs> after their <laughs> investigations. So, can I, can I, can I, when you're done with it, can I get it? <laughs> and you think, okay, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, there's some true, true curiosity. Uh, in, yeah, in so we've had a few yeah. engineers trying out our little Indian masks. Uh, nice. Not quite on purpose and yeah, usually yeah. sedated, but then yeah. then they can Wake come back and, and uh, firsthand yeah. talk about. Yeah. So afterwards, like, were you sore? How sore were yeah. you? Where were you sore? That sort of thing. That's um, super interesting. Uh, that's sort of the play, yeah. playground yeah. side of engineering. If you have to give uh, um, two pieces of advice uh, to someone else who are uh, earlier in the journey or on the same journey of integrating uh, sustainability into to product development uh, in, in, medical med devices? in medical devices, which advice would you give? Uh, well, uh, that's sort of a general device in engineering, but don't try to oversimplify it because oversimplifying it will make you overlook a lot of the pitfalls in it. Interesting. Uh, so I think you, you, you need to embrace the complexity of it if you want to do it right. Okay. You can also say, um, I had a talk with, some, uh, with a consulting company that we hired um, in the beginning of, the, of our efforts to, to sort of uh, help us with some of the sort of finding out what's out there. Uh, kind of work and one of their first questions was sort of very carefully I sort of ask so sort of what aspect of sustainability is it that you're interested in is mm. it is it the branding or is it what are you mm. sort of looking at what you can put in your ESG report or whatever mm. and <laughs> and I remember thinking listen I'm an engineer I don't give a shit how it looks mm. I want it to be environmentally friendly Mm. I'm not in it for the money or mm. the branding or the how much more we can sell or whatever. Those are prerequisites that I can get my ideas ideas yeah, through. Yeah. There, there are tools purpose, to get it out there, but not... Uh, exactly, yeah. but my purpose is to make it better for the environment. Yeah. My purpose is that I, well, first of all, it's fun to challenge yourself on doing something that's not straightforward. But my primary purpose is leaving the leaving a world that will survive, making sure there are still lines on the Serengeti when my kids are old enough to go and see them. That that sort of thing, knowing that that that's what drives me in it. Um, but I think you need to make that clear what your purpose is before mm -hmm. you go into it, uh, and 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 that that purpose will be different for different departments. Uh, one of the things that I'm trying to force in Ambu is that I, th I think a prerequisite to do it is to put a price on it yeah. internally yeah. on mm -hmm. what it's worth to us. Mm -hmm. uh, because we, if we leave up to the projects to determine mm -hmm. what's worth most, a cost reduction or a, a more environmentally mm -hmm. friendly material, that the, then it will be... Uh, up to the people who are in the project and it'll depend who's stronger, mm. the cost conscious person or the environmentally friendly mm. person who yells higher. Um, if we want to make sort of a streamlined decision process mm. on it, then we need to be willing to put a price on what is, what is a ton of CO2 worth mm. in Ambu? What can you equivalent, mm. equivalent that in? in sort of your cost calculations, then, then that reduction, you have to have a price on it so that you can, and so that you can make those decisions because you're never gonna get a sort of, a, you, your KPIs are always going to go against it, right? Mm. You'll always have a KPI for your production and yeah. your procurement to lower costs exactly. and to do yeah. things cheaper. So they're never going to on their own go out and choose a more environmentally friendly uh, material. Yeah. 
if it goes against their own KPIs and their bonus schemes and whatever. Um, and but you also can't remove that that no, no. KPI of reducing cost, right? No, and and that's it's one of the key questions we ask when we sometimes do these maturity assessments of where where are, where are pharma and medtech companies on their sustainability journey, and a key question is always. Is it integrated into your uh, KPIs? Is this someone's responsibility? Uh, is it in the processes? Does it have a price and so on? And, and I think it's also, uh, I think an internal carbon tax is is a great tool for for future proofing yourself as well. That it's 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 quite likely that it will be externally priced and and, and taxed in 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 a lot of the possible futures. That I mean, we we don't know. We don't know when. We don't know how much. But uh, it, it's probably coming, and, and 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 probably some of the other things later on for, for material use and. Uh, yeah, so for me, sort of the crudest thing yeah. to do is 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 I use the prices of carbon uh, yeah. quotes, uh, mm. carbon um, credits that yeah. that you can find on the internet, etc. Mm. But those are also set way too low in my yeah. opinion. So, you know, my cases would be stronger if we had an internal price that was based on our values. Mm. Um, but you can say these advices are not limited to sustainability, uh, sort of considering owning the complexity of what you want to do and mm. considering how your cap what, what behavior your KPIs are promoting mm. and making sure that there are incentives to, pr to behave the way that you want people to behave. Those are general advices for any company doing anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's it. Uh, but uh, yeah. but they work quite well for sustainability, and they're quite easily overlooked. Yeah, there's always it's like yeah, we want those things, and then all the things that we normally do when we want something in an organization somehow tend to forget to do with sustainability. That yeah. oh, it should be someone's responsibility. It should be in the KPI. It should be in the process. It should have a price. These are all things that if, if we wanted some other change in a digitalization initiative or w whichever it, 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 it might be a strategic priority, yeah. it would be a natural toolbox that's somehow often overlooked uh, with sustainability. And then, like, um, the, the, I suppose I have a request for those who wanted to do want to do it is to reach out because yeah. I think uh, some of what is missing a little bit or what is immature from my point of view is is some of the the, the legislative drivers and the certification setups, etc., uh, around sustainability. Mm -hmm. That in medical devices we already have this really strong focus on tracking our materials mm -hmm. and being responsible for for our materials and the certification schemes for uh, being sustainable and, mm. and, and bio-friendly, etc. Uh, they're built for non-medical device companies. Yeah. They're built for companies who didn't previously track these things, mm. and that means that they have a lot of procedures and control mm. and tracking built into them. Mm. But for medical devices, <laughs> I don't see it as a feasible thing. To mm. do it twice. <laughs> no, no, you already, you know exactly. So we're already uh, doing it. So we need a setup that works for medical devices. Yeah. And uh, in order to get a setup that works for medical devices, I think that requires the medical device industry to sort of take an active stance on it. Mm. We can hope that uh, Abu, with sort of the yeah. the uh, the the titles we have as the most innov innovative medical device company, etc. Those mm. uh, sort of different awards that we've won. That means we get to have a say when we mm. talk to people, but the more medical device companies that goes together in driving this, the more likely it is that that that, that industry mm. <laughs> of, of making legislations and certifications will mm. actually um, realize that if they make a, a, a certification setup that works for medical device companies, then I think medical device companies would get there very fast. Uh, and then I think uh, yeah, bioplastics yeah. are under underestimated a little bit. Yeah. Um, not biodegradable plastics, but bio-based plastics. Yeah. We've had a lot of discussions about that mm. in Ambu. But something about owning the responsibility of what are the initial building blocks you put out there. Mm. Yeah, definitely. That's, That's hereby that passed I on with the... Uh, uh, for the other medtech uh, companies, yeah, and I've uh, none mentioned, none forgotten, but it's uh, I, I think it's a shame how uh, some of the organizations uh, that represent uh, companies in the healthcare industry have 
sort of taking an approach to sustainability of uh, how can we avoid this as much as possible to not put a burden on our members yeah. rather than pull into it and say, okay, if we engage in this discussion, then we have some say in forming it so that it's useful for our members. And it's especially in a Danish and, and Northern European context, com comparatively, the average medtech company here is quite good on sustainability. Still has a long way to go, but globally comparative. So yeah. it's, it's a co potential competitive advantage that if you don't dive into the, the discussion and the, the, the regulation, in my opinion, you're missing out also commercially. Yeah. But you can say those organizations are driven by their members, right? And yeah. that is the discussion that has been ongoing in AMBU uh, for the past uh, couple of years and, and is still ongoing, mm -hmm. is, is that sort of change from <laughs> how do we avoid this mm -hmm. additional complication to mm -hmm. how do we find a way that it fits us? Um, yeah. But that's that's a that's yeah, human yeah. reaction, right? It's yeah, a, yeah, definitely. But that's I've, change management. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I I like to uh, use a picture I've gotten from a, a friend, uh, Christian, that sustainability is is like you're standing on uh, an escalator that's moving towards you. So if you're standing still, you're you're being put behind. Mm -hmm. uh, put behind in this sense, meaning that if you are you are reactive. Uh, it's going to be worse for your talent attraction. It's going to be more costly to live up to regulation that can be passed uh, qu quite fast. You're going to be a less attractive a cl a clinical partner and so on if, if you're just standing still waiting for the others. Uh, what it was. Whereas if you go up, you're going to spend some energy going up the escalators coming towards you, but you're also more likely to, to reap the benefits of, of the strategic and commercial value in sustainability. And that is true for any innovation. Yeah. Any innovation that you want to drive, then, really then, that, then, then, then that's the truth, right? And uh, you go out today, you talk to companies. I don't know a single company who tries to, uh, who markets themselves on not being innovative. Yeah. Everyone is per definition innovative. Um, and most people then try to see how can we structure innovation. And that's the wrong way to think about it yeah. because structure kills innovation. You mm. cannot structure it. Mm. You have to let it go mm. and, and hope that it can live in a chaotic setting. Mm. And that's not to say that you like shouldn't uh, that you shouldn't have processes and you shouldn't uh, talk about it and you shouldn't think about it. But mm. uh, but the best innovation you get when is when it says. Yeah, yeah, we have this process, and I'm going to do it differently because <laughs> this is what <laughs> this is why the process doesn't oh. work for what I want to do. Because uh, I, I tend to say, and our finance people hate me when I say it, um, is that this is my plan of what I'm going to do, and they say, great, so that's how much money you're going to spend, and I say, no, I promise you that that will not be the money I spend. Yeah. It's the only that's thing the I can promise, promise you. I can't <laughs> tell you it will be more or less. It's my best guess. Yeah. But if I go out and do what I planned. Mm then I didn't innovate anything. Yeah. Then I didn't learn anything. Yeah, then you're not integrating feedback uh, and learnings fast if enough. If our projects the, uh, follow the project plan that they put in the initial phase of a project, mm. then they didn't get smarter along the way. And then they knew the very first day exactly what product they were going to do, and then there was no <laughs> point in spending mm. two or three years developing it, right? Yeah. Uh, so, but that's, uh, that's, that's scary. That's yeah, scary uh, in a world of control. People don't handle uncertainty well. Uh, no, it's difficult to 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 handle at least. But but sustainability is one of those things, and I think right now sustainability is the most fashionable innovation parameter. So yeah, yeah. if you're not in it, it will be a prerequisite for the future, I'm sure. Yeah. Also for medical devices, yeah. but it will just come later to medical devices, and maybe in a slightly different form than it will to other consumer products. Yeah. yeah, it's a bit like going back to in in the 90s, there were, you know, internet companies and uh, those were like a, a special breed that, that were digital. And today, everybody uh, will say that they are, they are a digital company. And I think in the in the healthcare and the, the medtech industry, that's still sort of the discussion. Well, well, we are, we are not the sustainable healthcare company. We're just a medtech company. But the truth is that the, the whole industry has to get there. 
Mm. Oh, but you have to be, and uh, and also as you say, to attract talent. Mm. Um, yeah, you, you, most you, engineers, uh, I know very few engineers, and and at least no young engineers, mm -hmm. that are not interested in working with sustainability in some sort of. It's one of the problems with understanding science is that you understand the problems of how bad it is. Uh, I was just giving. Um, uh, a, a keynote to a pretty large uh, U.S. company outside the healthcare industry recently, and and in the Q and A with, uh, I mean, it was U.S. It's, it's a different context. Uh, there were uh, questions uh, around. Well, we don't really know if global warming is man-made. Uh, what is all a hoax? And how? And and uh, so so that's also a reality that's that's still there. And uh, my my key point to that was that. Even if you don't believe all of this, or you're a complete cynic who, who doesn't care, uh, the correct strategic and commercial uh, decision is, is still to, to engage in, in this. Uh, and you can say, uh, I've had those uh, discussions being at, at DTU, um, mm -hmm. being right next to the Climate Research Center, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and um, being uh, involved with a lot of geology studies and the people who would was researching and in, in making cloud chambers in the basement of DTU mm. and trying to find out exactly what was the root cause of all the mm. the different CO2 figures and global warming, etc. Um, and I always had the sort of, yeah, I, I, I get it. And I, I'm not sure I 100% would say that, that the climate changes are just man-made, but it doesn't matter. Mm. We're human beings. We should pollute as little as possible. Mm on all factors. Uh, do I think that CO2 is, a, is an important factor? Yes. Do I think it's the only factor? No. I think we should consider everything that we do that pollutes the earth mm. and the environment. Um, and it's great that CO2 is on the public agenda the way it is because that gives us the incentive to do something about it. Uh, and I hope that eventually we go through all the different polluting factors that we have as, as a, as a industrialized world um, and, and yeah. you can say it, it's right now the energy prices the gas prices etc they're also dri driving changes that are going in that direction right how do you make sure the most efficient thing that we could do as mankind is to take a good hard look at consumerism and how yeah. much yeah, at the way that human beings live but I also don't believe that we're ever going to go backwards in that development uh, because that's not human nature. That's never what's going to happen. Uh, mean so zero, unfortunately. Con convenience uh, will, will, will always win. Well, it falls uh, in uh, the category that I also uh, think that the, that the original theory behind communism is quite beautiful, but <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't believe it'll ever work. Uh, 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 and, 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 and the same thing goes for consumerism. So, but, but we can go for yeah. trying to make it as Definitely. efficiently, as yeah. practical, as environmentally friendly as possible. And I have no doubt that in 10 years and 20 years and 30 years, my kids are going to sit and think, ah, oh, mom thought she was being environmentally friendly by doing this. <laughs> you know, uh, that's, that's, that's just the way it's going to be. Definitely. Thankfully, yeah, they'll thankfully. be better than I am. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think we couldn't have uh, ended on a more, uh, more beautiful note. Uh, and, uh, and thankfully, there's, uh, there's still hope for the future curious. Thank you so much, Tia. This is a, feels Thank like I'm force me. stopping the conversation because <laughs> we could go on. Uh, so we'll just have to get you back another time. Uh, it was really insightful and, and thanks for sharing so honestly. Thank you. That was really uh, a, a joy to do the, the episode uh, with Tia. There are so many uh, takeaways and things that have, uh, have stuck with me. I think uh, one of the things that really stood out is that, uh, as, as she said, uh, the things that we're seeing uh, that are tough uh, in, in sustainability and in developing sustainable products, and those are the things that would have been tough uh, in any innovation pro uh, process. And if you want to reap the benefits of any kind of innovation, you have to lean yourself into it and you have to go into the uncertainty uh, and be proactive. Uh, and I think Tia and his, her team is doing a very good job of that. Um, 
So thanks for, for listening in and uh, you can always uh, find more stuff with us uh, and the projects we do for our clients at greeninnovationgroup.com.